This is CGTN, China Global Television Network. a world-class athlete? What does it take to get to the top of the athletics world? Kenya is renowned for its athletes, and in particular, middle and long-distance runners win medals, set records, and then break them. We're in Kenya's Rift Valley, a region famous for producing athletics world champions. Today, we spend a day with Viola Lagarde, a world-class athlete who started off running the 1,500 meters, but has now switched to another challenging discipline, the marathon. Now, after changing disciplines, Viola has now begun to assert herself on the world marathon stage. Today, we share some of her journey and learn more about exactly what drives her. I'm Beatrice Marshall. Welcome to Talk Africa. Viola started off her marathon career with a bang, placing second in the New York Marathon in November of 2021 and just completed a half marathon in Atlanta. We caught up with her training in Eldoret, a town in the Kenyan Rift Valley which has been dubbed the home of champions. Eldoret and its neighboring town Iten are globally renowned for producing and training some of the world's finest athletes. I caught up with Viola training in her hometown. Viola, great to see you. Good to see you. It looks like you've already done your morning run today. I have, yeah, I did. <laughs> how far did you run today? I did 20 kilometers. Wow, and how long did that take you? An hour 30. I had an easy one today, so not that fast. How often do you train? I train every day, mostly six days a week, sometimes seven, depending on the week. Tell me about your, um, your athletic career and your, your, you know, your background, how you started training, how you started running, what motivated you? I'm the youngest of 10, so growing up I just knew running was the normalcy of our family so everybody had to adapt running and knowing what running had done for my older siblings for example those who went to america for education i knew running was a way out for me also to get my education without having to pay for it so yeah that's how basically i got into running so how long have you been uh, an athlete um i started running in the university in 2009 but then professionally, I've been running since 2013. Many people often ask, like, why do you, people train in Iten? I mean, what is the fascination with this particular area? Uh, number one, you get to train with world-class athletes. Everybody that is world-class athlete, you will find them here in Iten. For example, Mary Kay Tan, who is a world record, former world record holder in marathon and multiple champions in uh, this world-class marathon, trains here in Iten, Florence, Edna Kiblaga, they all train here. And another thing is because of the altitude, this is a very good place for training, especially um, you get everybody to train with you. There's no day that I would get, leave out, uh, get out of my house and not find anyone to train with. So it's really perfect for training. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tell me about a bit more about your family, because um, you know, you, you're talking about you, you come from a family of, of athletes and you're the last in that line of family of athletes. I mean, is it about the genes or is it about, uh, you know, what was the motivation for your family as well? Um, for us, it's. Uh, I think a lot of athletes will say the same with myself that um, poverty was the number, the motivation to get out of it. And one of my brothers was able to go to America earlier on, and he showed us that you know there's a way out of this. So for us, going out of Kenya and getting the education was the number one motivation because we knew we were there was no way we were going to be able to get education in Kenya and have our parents pay for it. But 
also the genes played a role because also watching my brother you look at it and you say I, I think I can do the same thing in the future when I grow up so for me growing up I looked at my brother and say I want to be in the TV I want to be an Olympian I want to be a world record holder in the future so that has been the motivation growing up and seeing my older siblings run. Mm -hmm. yeah. So where have you achieved uh, most of your success what what race where and what are you training for now? When I turned pro my first goal was to make a team for Kenya and I was able to participate in 2015 World Championships for Kenya. Mm -hmm. And then my next uh, achievement was in 2016 when I represented Kenya in 20, uh, 1500 meters at the Olympics. Mm -hmm. And then the most recent one was the New York where I debuted in my marathon and I was second. So those were mainly my achievements so far. You're now training for the marathon, but you were running the 1500 before. Yes. How was that transition? How did you transition to the marathon? Um, so it wasn't really something that was planned. In 2016, after running the Olympics in uh, 1500 at the Olympics, I knew I was going to move up to distance, let's say 5,000 at World Championships or maintain the 1500. But then right when I got injured, I just started doing long runs and just prepping for a 5,000. But then after that, my coach told me, hey, let's try, let's try a 10K. And when I tried the 10K, I ended up winning the Berlin 10K, which was a surprise. And from there, I just knew that there was no way going back to 1500. And that's where the transition started. And so far, it's been really good. I thank God I haven't had any injuries during preparing for any of my marathons. So it's been really smooth and nice. Mm -hmm. yes. So uh, where else do you train? Do you do all your training here in the 10? Uh, no, I do a lot of training here in the 10 for, let's say, longer and fat legs and temple runs. But I do track workouts at the stadium in Eldorado Kipchoge. So you can come along. I'll go show you. watching you uh, train for the last uh, two hours. What do you do in this routine? Uh, mostly what we do here is a lot of endurance, fast and mental preparing stuff here. Uh, for example, today I did a lot of 1000s repeats with short rest, faster intervals. So yeah, we do a lot of faster stuff here. So what is the difference between training here and training out in Iten? Um, in Iten it's usually just to, to get the terrains falling and rolling terrains for us to just do something longer. But when we get here on the track, we focus on the things that you would do in a race. You simulate to what would happen in a race. You think about yourself when you're feeling the lactic because also in the altitude, it's really not that easy to feel the lactic because you are on a steady pace. But with here, we are on a fast, steady pace, but also with a little bit of rest. So it hits you. So this one prepares you for sure for a race. So, you know, you know, you talk about um, altitude, yes. you know, and for most of us uh, who are not athletes, we always wonder, what is this about um, altitude training? Um, altitude training, it's basically helps you to well, it builds a lot of lactic acids in your body because there's less oxygen in high altitude areas. So you tend to strain when, you, when you're training or doing any exercise. So it helps you, especially when you go to a race in, let's say, for example, in the US or in Europe where it's sea level. So when you drop down to sea level, you still have the advantage from the altitude, from low oxygen. So you go to high um, oxygen level, you feel even better, you have a lot of uh, blood flow into your muscles and body then it makes it easy for you to compete faster so it makes sense for us athletes to come to Iten and our Eldora to do high altitude training so that we can get the advantage during races. So I know you you're based in the US uh, at some part of your training how different is the training in the US versus training here and you know why did you make the preference to train here? Uh, number one I like Kenya for the obvious reasons everybody is here I get a lot of uh, international performing athletes uh, I we have a lot of champions here so it makes it easy for me to just blend in and 
try to survive and that will will give me the results that I want in races and then also Kenya is high altitude like I said earlier it's an advantage for me to train here in Kenya and then go to other countries to perform so it makes it easy for me also another thing I have my coach here in Kenya and my training mates uh, which is very very important for me to get feedback right away from my coach especially from my training sessions tell me about the diet yes um, we eat everything. Uh, but surprising, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. People have myths on what athletes eat or we don't eat much. We do eat a lot. Uh, it's a little different though with track and field athletes because you cannot consume a lot because you don't use everything. But for us, the marathon athletes, since I switched to marathon, I consume a lot of carbohydrates um, and especially proteins for muscle recovery. So I just eat a lot as, mu as much as my body wants. I would just keep eating. But then I also have to hydrate, things like that, stretch, uh, sleep early. So I have a, a routine on food, hydration and sleep. Right, food, hydration and sleep. So, and then you, you, know, you were talking to me about um, all these athletes that, you know, most of them, uh, or at least everybody here who comes to train, the, you know, the hundreds of young people who try every day, this is what they do on a daily basis. And uh, tell me about that focus. Um, it is discipline. Uh, as an athlete, we sacrifice a lot. I don't think uh, people understand that we have to give up everything else. We have to give up other careers because running is more demanding by itself. So we have to discipline ourselves to focus on running, focus on hydrating, stretching, gym and sleep. So our life is just focused on athletics. So anything else we don't really have time sometimes i've had people say you know i know our relatives had a celebration they had a wedding but i could not go and for normal people they don't understand why you're not going it's because the next day you have a hard session and you cannot risk traveling and getting tired because the next session you're not going to give it a hundred percent because you are already worn down a lot of athletes still come to train here, but as you, uh, we, we you know we're seeing this still under construction. This uh, Kipchoge Stadium. Tell me about the facilities around Kenya where the world-class athletes train. Um, most of us come here to Kipchoge Stadium because it's one of the nicest in this area. Uh, we have other tr high altitude training facilities in Iten, but. Uh, Unfortunately, we don't have a good track in it and we had Kamarin Stadium that was supposed to have been constructed fully by now and for us to take advantage of that, but it hasn't been completed. So I'm hoping that in the near future, the, our local governments or the national government would complete that one. That way we are not tearing this one down. As you can see, it's under construction and the, tom and the track by itself is wearing out. So yeah, we, we just hope that we can get more facilities because we have a lot of athletes our country produces champions and we would wish that you know we get the facilities that we need for us to prepare for big events so you know i, I was a little bit intimidated myself you know because i walked into uh, the training sessions yes. which is which as you tell me it's a regular everybody um you know comes here in the morning uh, you know at the stadium to train regular training but there's so many you know world champions and you were like pointing out to me so and so and i'm like everybody here is a champion how does it feel training among champions every day it feels great because now you you don't have that mindset going into a race that oh my god i'm competing against this person because you get to train with them here so that makes you feel like you're part of them and you're just as champion yourself so you already have the mental preparedness knowing that if i'm going to face anyone out there there's no one who is more threatening than my own teammates who are the champions here. All right, thank you so much for that. Well, we're going to take a short break now. When we come back, we'll have more with Viola Lagat. <laughs>
So we've just run into Faith Kipia Gon, double Olympic gold medalist training here at the Kipchoge Stadium in Eldoret. And this is the beauty about this region, uh, you know, world champions training alongside upcoming athletes. Faith, you've just finished your session here. Why do the athletes uh, choose to train here? Um, actually, as for me, I choose Eldoret because I'm married here uh, once in 2017. I met my, uh, my love of my life, uh, Timothy Ketum, and that's why we moved here in Eldred, um, and I decided to, to go to Kaptagat camp where LUT is training and uh, Geoffrey Kamoro is training. And I joined uh, Coach Patrick uh, 2019, and it's really, really super coach, and that's why I, I choose to train here in Eldred. So how, how are you feeling now? I mean, how do you feel? Well, I, are you in great shape? How do you feel? <laughs> <laughs> um, I can say I really feel good. I really uh, feel um, I'm comfortable uh, training here in Eldred. At least I have peaceful mind uh, to train here because I, I see strong at, uh, athletes like Elud Kipchoge training here and following their footsteps has given me a, a big uh, motivation that I can do really better uh, following to wh what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So we met a lot of young, um, you know, athletes and they, and they were talking about, you know, um, coming here and training until they make it. Talk to me about your career. How has it been? Um, I can say uh, my career has been fluent. Uh, I've been working hard since um, I discovered I can be a, a good athlete. Um, because I started when I was young, I started uh, when I was youth. I graduated mostly to senior category. And I'm seeing my career is going on well. I'm really working hard and seeing seeing, uh, seeing bright future. I, I hope I will do more better and uh, more strong um, as I go to um, a, a big level. Yeah. So w w where do you feel your career is now? What have been your best moments? Well, actually, I can say my big, big moments, uh, it was Tokyo, uh, 2020 Olympics, uh, where I won the gold medal as a mom. Uh, and I, did, I dedicated the medal to my daughter. And uh, yeah, I, you know, uh, my daughter has been part of me since I gave birth to her. And uh, I have been really working hard. And I can say my best moment was Tokyo. I want to know about some of the challenges because, you know, I, I've been watching the athletes train sometimes from as early as 5.30 and, and I see the determination on their faces. I see, you know, and then they tell me that they're going to come back again in the afternoon for uh, softer training, for warm-ups and all that sort of thing. Tell me about some of the challenges that uh, athletes or yourself have faced uh, in your career. Actually, um, I can say as for me, I've never faced any difficulties or any um, any um, struggles because I got into um, a big uh, a big support. I got people support me really really good. Uh, my husband, my coach, my management, they are really been there for me. So as for me, uh, there's I have never had any challenges. But many athletes faced um, difficulties, uh, especially as ladies. You know, we don't have uh, many women out there, uh, big names, especially in Kenya. We have really few athletes, really few female athlete stars. But I, I could like, encourage them to, to work hard and be disciplined, and uh, we follow our hearts as women. And we want to motivate, uh, um, as for me, I want to motivate women. I want to, to show them the way that everything is possible. And I want to, to, to show other young girls that, um, everything is possible and let them follow our footsteps and we will really show them the good way to, to go and uh, follow. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're a great mentor for um, young young people, especially uh, young girls. I, I mean, um, what do you think though needs to be done? What kind of support do young athletes need? I think um, those uh, women representative in athletic school uh, come together and encourage women to do more better. I think we will we will show them the way as as elite women, elite athletes. We will show them the way as America it has started with uh, Agnes Zirop Memorial um, uh, to, to 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 end gender-based violence. That's I think. Um, Mary Kaitanya show other women the way and I think we will follow um, Mary Kaitanya's way and we will show um, young girls that this is the good way to go. So what next for uh, Faith Kipiagon? 
Uh, as for me, I'm now uh, really putting my head, to, uh, my head up uh, towards the World Championship in Oregon. And uh, probably uh, on May, uh, I will start the Dumbo Leagues and I hope going forward I will do the best this year in 2022. And really good luck to you, Faith. It's really such a pleasure having met you here, just having run into you like that and Thank having you. spoken to you. Thank you so much for, Thank you for, so much. for your time. As we've seen, a training for world-class athletes requires serious dedication from early morning runs to intense workouts. But beyond athletics, what are some of the things that drive Viola? Viola, I know, you know you've had a great career, but I want to find out about some of the challenges. What have been some of your challenges through the journey? I think some of the things when it comes to my professional career is the consistency at the beginning. Uh, I struggled to, to stay up par when it came to performing in track. Mm -hmm. But then when I moved to road races, I saw a lot of consistency and that has been really encouraging for me and has made me the person that I am, a, a strong-minded person. It has built me to be where I am right now. And so I am almost happy for those challenges that I had at the beginning mm -hmm. that have given me the triumphs that I have right now. But I also noticed that you're wearing a, a t-shirt that says End GBV. Yes. Talk to us about that. Um, ending GBV is something that I'm really really passionate about um, it to everybody it looked like it was given birth when Agnes Sirop died but this is something that you know I've had an issue with from the beginning from growing up I saw my own relatives going through this issue and I knew what I wanted to do I wanted to go back to my community and work on ways to end gender-based violence but then when my friend Agnes Sirop died of my friends and myself decided that, you know, enough is enough. It's time for us to step up and take actions on ending gender-based violence. And that's where T-ROPS Angels started. Um, it's just a group of seven people. The first person is Agnes T-ROPS' father. Uh, he's really passionate. He's been very supportive of us since when this started. And he's a good figure for us to have because we also need men to walk along us. And then some other athletes also um, are involved like Mary Kay Tan, John Telimo. I noticed that uh, you know we are at the field here yes. and uh, we found you uh, you know uh, with the young people yes. what is it you're doing exactly with the with the young athletes? Uh, for the much much younger athletes like the ones that we have here we do a lot of mentorship with them we try to empower them and also talk to them about what gender-based violence on a shallow level because they don't understand it quite well until they're a little bit older. So we still want to make sure that they understand what it is and to spot those signs early enough. That way they do not fall victims because I believe if Agnes T. Robb knew what gender-based violence is, she would have done everything to avoid what happened to her. But unfortunately, um, we have all emulated what our mothers or our older sisters do. We persevere in our relationships, and especially our mothers, they tell us, go persevere, my daughter. You know, marriage is like that. He will change. Mm -hmm. And that is the culture that I am very passionate very much about changing and you know, making sure that none of this is happening to any of our girls that we have here today. So, um, you know, when you um, thought about having a foundation and when you th thought about uh, the mentorship, yes. um, you know, what is it that inspired you? Um, I mean, you're still at a very young age. Yes. Yeah, if I may say um, that. Yeah, it's, it's the gap and it's something that nobody wants to talk about. So why not take the lead if no one wants to take that lead? And I know some people have tried and there have been a lot of challenges along the way. And I know we've also had some challenges also, which involves, you know, when we started at the beginning, people thought we are anti-men. We are these women who don't want women to stay married. We want people to get to stay married, but stay married happy, stay married without abuse. So that's what we are really advocating for. What do you see as the future of sport in Kenya, mm -hmm. as the future of athletics yes. in Kenya? I would want to see a lot being done. And I think, uh, especially with athletics, we want a lot of our athletes to be encouraged to stay in school. Uh, we Like these young, ki uh, young uh, kids here training, they come here end of school, and that is perfect because they focus more on athletics when school is out. But when you go to most places, young kids are being encouraged to go professional running because it's a way out of poverty or helping their families. So one thing that I think 
needs to be done, especially in athletics, is to encourage young athletes to focus on both at academics and, and their education. And then we also need the support. Mm -hmm. Athletes need a lot of support. For example, when COVID started, we saw a lot of athletes ha uh, go through a mental breakdown. And, and you cannot perform as an athlete when you are not getting the support that we need. So I'm hoping um, the organizations that are involved, like Athletics Kenya and especially a local government, should help athletes who are struggling. What about your future aspirations? Where do you see yourself? Um, in sports, I, I think I have a few goals. Uh, win an Olympic medal in marathon. Since I moved up in marathon, I think it's something that I, I see myself doing much, much better than when I was running track. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things that I would want to see myself do before I retire. And then when I retire from running, I would see myself working with women, young people, mentoring them and making sure that, you know, they, they get the education that they need because it's very, very important for especially young people to get educated because it's a way out. I know for myself, I wouldn't be standing here today if I didn't get the education that I needed and that has opened my mind to a lot of things. So you're mentoring and, and uh, empowering. So yes. what message would you have for the young athletes? Uh, for young athletes, please speak out. There's nothing wrong with speaking out. If, so, if one person doubts you when you tell them something happened to you, uh, look out for somebody else that can help you if you cannot reach me. But um, our contacts are all out there on social media. You can reach out to us, T-Rops Angels. We will welcome you. We will make sure that you get the right help that you need. We still have a lot of things to do with a lot of uh, agencies in terms of, let's say, medical response and, you know, hotlines and just a lot of mental health awareness. So we, we will have a, a good team in the future, I hope really soon. Uh, I, can, I can basically hint on something good coming up around before June. So uh, speak up. Don't be afraid to speak out if something is not right. And you are always right. Your instincts are always right. Follow your instincts. Don't let everybody, anybody tell you not say something. You hear something, say something. Somebody does something to you, say something. Always speak up. All right. Yeah. It's such a great work you're doing. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Eldoret and Iten have produced some of the greatest middle and long distance runners of all time. Today, at every turn, you run into scores of young athletes training hard to make it onto the global stage. Many of them, like Viola, come from humble beginnings, and athletics has afforded them an opportunity to better their lives and that of their community. The high altitude in Iten provides the perfect training ground to hone these athletes. But it is only their grit, hard work and determination that enables them to become the best of the best. As another day comes to an end in the home of champions, we say goodbye and thank you to the stellar athletes here and wish them well as they continue to shine in global athletics. From me, Beatrice Marshall, in the Kenya. Until next time, it's goodbye. Oh, yeah.